everyone, and welcome to the Centurion Leadership Battalion podcast, your source of accountability, inspiration, and motivation to become your best and reach your fullest potential every day. Our motto, it's simple, to use our determination to crush our everyday leadership tasks so that we dominate in our delivery of services and products to our clients and achieve victory in personal growth, profitability, and creating environments for those around us to prosper. Let's get this show started. Welcome back to the Centurion Leadership Battalion podcast. We hope you are doing well and having a great day wherever you are listening in from. This is your host, Elena. We have Justin on with us per usual to dive into another question and answer episode for you. Today's question is going to be, what does it mean to lead as a young entrepreneur? So this episode is going to be perfect for any up and coming leaders or any young person who has a dream of becoming an entrepreneur now or in the future. We're really excited to dive into the question. As usual, we always love your ratings and reviews and hearing from you. So if you could take a few minutes during or after the episode to give us some information on what you thought, that would be great. Welcome back, Justin. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, everyone. Follow us on Facebook. Facebook and Instagram. Um, there's a lot of great content on both. There's also a lot of great leadership content and posts on my personal Instagram at Justin Bizarro. Um, and anyone listening and also uh, follow uh, Scavengeology with uh, Elena Hamade and um, Justin the Food Entrepreneurs. Also, those are two podcasts. They're still continuing to grow. I saw that Scavengeology, I can't even say it, Scavengeology um, that's glad. That's why I don't host it guys. I can't even do the introduction. So, um, it's, um, but the numbers are climbing. So, I mean, it's pretty impressive and, um, we're getting a lot of great other content and, and traction with better with big and fat studios and the whole family. So it's kind of cool to see. So thank you everyone for your love and support. Um, and, uh, following us on all of the podcasts. And so if you're listening in today, I believe the question was, um, how do you lead as a young entrepreneur, um, <clears throat> which is interesting because I think we're so focused. Uh, well, let's just, I'm gonna try to drive value here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna just talk about one, we'll take a little, we'll get in the DeLorean and with Michael J. Fox and <clears throat> Dr. Brown, whatever the actor's name is, and we'll go back 20 years in time to 21 year old, 22 year old, 23 year old Justin, somewhere around there um <clears throat> being leading and being a young entrepreneur and leading yourself which i think is probably the most important thing to do as a young entrepreneur first before you can lead anyone else like seriously it's a really hard skill set and i got to and i'll say this still to today if there's a day it doesn't happen very often anymore where i get off track but every once in a while every about once a year maybe maybe not maybe more like one twice once every two years I'll get off on something and so this is what I'm going to talk about the lesson when you get off is when you forget to lead yourself um there's a in back when I was a young entrepreneur I didn't lead myself at all very often very well whatever so I think this is a good question for anyone if I could go back and tell myself something <clears throat> this would be one of those things and so it's a good question if I can help anyone expedite the time it took me, which was really till I was 30 years old before I figured, started figuring these things out. And then from there, once you figure it out, you know, <clears throat> whatever's happening on the inside, the outside takes five years to match. So um, whatever you're doing now, you're not going to see the results for five years. That's usually how it is. The gym, the exercise, whatever. Um, it's always going to be that way. I mean, I think that's just probably a good rule of thumb. You're never going to build a habit unless you do it for at least 18 months and you're never going to be successful at something and, and feel good about it um, for five years. So there's always going to be a lag there. Um, but anyway, I wish I would have known that, um, that at the amount of time and the frustration should have been now. So how, could I have led myself better? Um, patience, for sure. Uh, not wanting the quick money. Uh, not pushing everyone so hard for 
the the quick wins and looking more at the long-term results and the growth of everyone. Um, that's certainly um, personally how I would have done it, but um, I'm going to dive way more into the minutia than that. Um, Cause when you come out of school or you come out of high school, um, we have a lot of ideas and we have a lot of assumptions and we've seen a lot of people make it in the world and we don't know exactly how they've done it. And as a young entrepreneur or whatever, um, we often lack experience or lack, um, I don't know what to call it, but the street smarts that are necessary to be an entrepreneur. And we also lack the long-term vision and sight it takes um, to be an entrepreneur. Like we, we get that it takes four years to get through school, but we don't seem to understand that it probably really took 18 years for us to get through school from the age of four to 22. And so generally, if you're going to be successful as an entrepreneur, you should figure it's probably about the same path, 22 years, in my opinion, where you have the true confidence and whatever, some people do it in less, some people figure it out faster. Some people could use a podcast like this and maybe do it in seven or five. I don't know, but <clears throat> I'm talking about um, building something that's not only for wealth, but for uh, longevity. So <clears throat> leading as a young entrepreneur, one of the things I did do uh, that was fortunate for me because I had a mentor like my father, even though I was involved in food service partners and would help any chance I can get and be involved in the business and grow the business while I was in college from 1998 to 2002. Um, I also, because my father pushed me to, to gain experience from everyone else, not just from the business I was in. So I had internships and, and head hunting. I had internships in human resource recruiting um, and security service. I learned a lot of different things to try to gain different skill sets at things. I even was a plumber just to because um, I wanted to learn a skill on top of doing something. <clears throat> so I think that that's probably an important lesson. If you wanna lead as a young entrepreneur and lead yourself, you need to start building your business, but you need to learn from other people. And in and, and the world we live in, I gotta tell you, and at Food Service Partners, if I have employees that are working hard and they have a side hustle, I don't care if the side hustle and what they do at food service partners go together hand in hand, that's a triple win. That means it's a win for them, a win for the company and a win for us as a whole. That's a triple win. Same in a relationship guys. If you want to lead early on triple wins in personal relationships with romantic relationships are a thing you should strive for triple win, something that benefits both parties and grows both parties almost equally. Um, just one of those things. So <clears throat> anyway, the um, that's so that's what I would do. I would I would go out and gain experience. <clears throat> I would learn how to lead. I would <clears throat> lead myself by learning from other people. I I <clears throat> I was greener than I ever knew I would be. Um, I had a lot of successes, even with things like getting um, working on New York City hospital meals and contracts very early on, and having a lot of wins. But long term, it's harder to keep the wins going if you don't build the leadership skills that you need personally. <clears throat> and so at, by 30, it was harder for me to keep the wins going because I hadn't, well, everything had grown and we were growing, we weren't growing the people as fast because I hadn't per learned to grow myself or deal with the things that I needed to deal with as an entrepreneur or as a person. Or, and chosen bad relationships, for example, to, to do that. So um, that's just one of the things. What did I do right when I was young? Okay, I did a lot of things right. One, I didn't follow all of my peers in the major cities. I didn't go chasing what everyone else did. I didn't let someone else lead me. I didn't let peer pressure, society lead me. I worked and if once I was committed to food service partners and I decided I, I, I was done with what I was doing and I was going to take it on full time after college, um, I literally worked in Barnesville, Maryland, which is like 35 minutes uh, minimum from Washington, D.C., where most of my peers live. 
And so, and I wasn't going to live in D all the way in DC and reverse commute. That wouldn't make any sense or be financially responsible if I was trying to save money and be an entrepreneur. So I lived pretty far away, not with my parents, but close enough. And I worked in Barnesville, Maryland in my parents' basement on their farm. And so the sacrifice I made was a lot of being made fun of. Bizarre, you live in Guam. That's the, how they referred to how far I lived away. We'll never do anything up at your place. So if I wanted to have friends or do anything, I always had to take the initiative. Um, it was just the way it was. So while everyone else was out, you know, Wednesdays through Sundays, I was probably out Fridays, maybe a Saturday here and there. But because I lived so far away, because I didn't have much to do because most of my peers, when I did have time, I did things like coach soccer or read books or um, start to work my other side hustles that I was trying to work on or develop other businesses within food service partners. But the thing that happened is by separating myself and leading myself towards my dreams of being an entrepreneur and entrepreneurial, I didn't get as much into the havoc of the partying. And that doesn't mean I didn't do it more than I should have. Believe me, I could have done better still. But um, the thing that I learned is that that by that separation and by me living in Guam, <clears throat> it actually accelerated my learning and it accelerated me, my growth as a human. Um, I was extremely physically fit because that's what I was doing also during that time. Um, you know, I was, I was appreciating things as we took, as we talked about in the last podcast, I believe it was the last one. Um, but I appreciated the things in my life, including myself. And I think that as a young entrepreneur, we spend a lot of time wanting to grow and develop ourselves and understand who we are personally. Um, and we read a lot of books and we do a lot of education as young entrepreneurs and we get very caught up in continuing that. But I got to tell you, until you actually live it and experience it and decide that you're going to do it and that friends and family and the people in your life that you want to have appreciation for and with meaning grow them and you changes it, again it took me more like 30 and then when I really actually put it all into play I was probably about 33 you know so too long too many mistakes too many hardships definitely could have made way more money definitely could have a way bigger company all of those things. But <clears throat> so if you start now as a young entrepreneur, I feel that one of the things that you need to understand, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you need to commit, even if it's a side hustle. That means that if you're going to work and you're, but, and you're going to work, that means that when you're not working your main job to keep your, your roof over your head and you're trying to build your side hustle, any minute not spent on that side hustle, whether it's playing video games, going to bars, going on dates, sorry, whatever is not built on that side hustle. <clears throat> and so now if you find a partner that's into the same thing you are in side hustling and working and doing those things, different story, right? I'm not saying to not build relationships that aren't equal in goals and dreams when you find them, opportunity met preparedness, take advantage of it. But what I am saying is make sure they're the right ones and make sure that you don't make the same mistakes. I chose wrong relationships. They, they held me down. Their fears became the restrictions in my life. And so you want to lead in your life. Look at the fears that you have in your life that aren't your own. And are they logical? Or are they not? And if you look at society as a whole and you find people, I would really challenge you and challenge your brain to see that most people find a way in this world to achieve anything they set their mind to if they set their mind to it <clears throat> now that last part was the most important part but we see it all the time rock climbers whatever some of them die tragically i get it <clears throat> but they're still chasing their dreams and doing what they love to do and dying happy and with a purpose so that's what I'm saying. So 
I'm not saying to go chase something like that, but I am passionate enough where I would die for my business. Of course, if it meant everyone could go on and everyone could live and my family would be okay. Absolutely. You know, that's the type of thing I'm talking about where it's more important that I have built something that can live on without me and prosper without me. And we don't understand that as much um, at younger ages. And there's few and far between entrepreneurs that understand the impact they can make very much right now on a global scale with a better world, a better universe, a better planet, a healthier people, healthier food. It's enormous. So why waste your time on something else? Like if it were me and I were leading and I were to go back in my DeLorean, I'd be like, damn, how can I get a job, get experience, grow a side hustle that's not only going to be business and profitable, but literally changes the world for generations is an epic. So my time that I'm using is so much more compound. And that means that instead of my minute just comping, um, accomplishing work now that minute is accomplishing like what could be equivalent to 30 minutes if i tie all my dreams and i lead my life towards efficiency so i'm getting rid of anything that's not efficient as much as i can family's efficient guys relationships are efficiency i'm so just so we're clear the ones that are positive <clears throat> anyway just i'm not saying get rid of your relationships keep the positive ones chase the positive ones build the positive ones, grow the positive ones together, especially if they support one another's entrepreneurial endeavors and risks. Um, but anyway, I don't remember what I was saying, <clears throat> but that's sort of where we are. It's, it's how do you make choices that move your life forward and where every second and every minute is actually compounded. It's not worth just one minute. And then the monetary value of your time will be compounded later on. Your value by compounding that minute, even though it's really one minute, it's finite. It's gone as soon as it happens. But if you can make it worth 30 times as much in what you lead and what you do in that minute, <clears throat> it's hugely important. Think about what I'm doing with the podcast. I'm doing it. Everyone at Food Service Partners hears it. Everyone hears Justin Bizarro out there. I'm also trying to make a difference in the world. I'm practicing my public speaking skills. I'm um, working on growing other humans, such as Elena. I need to let her talk more if I'm going to grow her, something I need to work on. But just saying, those are all the things. So in this time I'm doing right now, that was seven things I just listed, I think. I think it was seven. And so <clears throat> that's my point, <clears throat> is if you're going to leave yourself as a long, young entrepreneur, You've got to maximize that minute. And it's hard to understand how to do it at first. But once you think about it, like you have a bunch of needles that you're sewing your life together. But if they're all strung by the same yarn, then they all look the same. They're all moving the same. They're all accomplishing the same large blanket or close or whatever at the same time. So it's getting done faster. And therefore those needles can produce more clothes or more blankets or more whatever, even though each needle represents a different aspect of your life, job, community, coaching, kids, family, whatever. You know, this is also for my kids. Number eight, hopefully they hear it. Probably don't listen to it now. Maybe one day it'll help them if they need it. Hopefully, if not, no big deal, someone else. So, um, sorry, Elena, what are your thoughts for today? I really gobbled that one up. Yeah, I think you, you shared a lot of really, really valuable takeaways from that uh, question. I think, you know, it's interesting talking about how you shared the entrepreneurs that you try to pour into and grow and how you actually support the people that you work with or that work for you technically to have their own side hustles or dreams. I think that's a really respectable trait because not all business people have that trait. They want their employees, their team members to be focused on, you know, the one mission and the one vision and kind of be one track, a one track mind to that same goal. And that's why they want to have those employees. But I think when you really see 
the benefits of having team members and employees that also see other dreams and see kind of the process that you have to go through as an entrepreneur. And they're also chasing that on the side outside of their, whether it's their full-time job or they work part-time with your company, whatever it is that they do. Um, I know that there's a lot of different employees that you have in your company, whether that be they're in an office nine to five or they're remote nine to five, or they're just there for a few hours a day or they're contract employees. I know you have so many different employees and team members that way, but I think it takes somebody really um, who's been through that journey of entrepreneurship themselves to appreciate having team members that are also doing the same thing. Sometimes I think, you know, even seeing this in friends and in people my, my same age, it's not to be judgmental towards them, but I think we talk a lot about people either have these qualities that they're kind of born with or exposed to early on or they don't and you can always develop them later on that's it's not to say you can't we talk about this so often you can always become an entrepreneur become a leader but you have to put in the effort right you have to research and learn and adapt these new qualities but i think for the people that don't have those qualities and don't see outside of their job they just kind of want to go to work clock in go home and and live their life whether that be you know, their hobbies, or like you said, going out on dates, going to the bar, doing whatever it is they do to unwind and relax. Um, I think it takes a special kind of leader to recognize, you know, I want people that are fully supportive of my mission and what I'm trying to do with my company, but I also want people that have something outside of this, you know, that they're trying to grow and they can kind of have this new vision of, or respect for what we're trying to do, you know, in our work hours together. And then I can also support them and pour back into them outside of their work hours with what we're trying to do in our company. And I just think that that's a really, uh, really awesome trait that you have. And I really appreciate you hear, talking about that and hearing about that um, a little bit more. So, I mean, here's the thing. <clears throat> I appreciate the compliment, Elena, just in case I don't, I don't usually, I kind of blow by compliments because I try not to sit in them because I don't want my head to get gassed up because if I get cocky, I feel like I'm going to get soft and not keep pursuing my dreams got to keep the the steam but um like the human like what we should want for every human is to achieve their dreams and this didn't come from me like i learned this from other people and it opened up a world for me and i learned it much later in life i was like mid 30s by the time someone really clicked it into my head and it's unfortunate that it took so long for me again but it's that every human has dreams and if you're going to have humans work for you and you're going to be an entrepreneur it's okay and you want to have dreams that are so large that all their dreams and all of their family's dreams fit inside your dream and and so back to young bizarro if you heard the way i got made fun of by for wanting to be an entrepreneur or talking about growing the business or talking about the millions of dollars FSP was going to have one day or, or how we were going to grow this business or one day we would have a hundred employees and one day we'd have 500 employees and all that and people not taking me seriously or not thinking it like I was wasting my time. What am I still doing that thing for the food, for the hospitals, that bad food for the hospitals, which our food's not bad just for reference, but let's just talk about the negative connotations and the blows. And it's interesting, like, you know, this is where as an entrepreneur, you learn that criticism is okay and there's truth in it, but it's also, one, it can be your steam if you allow it. And two, if you listen, you can really grow a business off of it. And so, yeah, I got a lot of criticism. Yeah, people made fun of a lot of things. Yeah, I heard a lot of it. It just became the steam. The criticisms towards the business itself, you know, hospital food, whatever, that became a focus. How do I make it better? How do I make it more sustainable? How do I tie it back to the environment? How do I make you eat your words? Literally with my business food from our business you make fun of it i'm gonna make you eat your words it's something that goes in my head all the time you're gonna eat my, you're gonna eat your words and my food and that's it is what it is but what i'm saying is you want to have that drive and you want to have that 
and it's okay. And people are going to knock you down and they're going to knock your dream down and they're going to knock you down. But at the end of the day, you just need to know that your dream needs to be big enough for everyone else's, no matter what they say. And it's unfortunate that all people can't dream big and pursue those dreams, but it actually just means that you have something that not everyone else has. And it's a superpower that you're developing that someone else isn't. It's really that simple. And not everyone in your company is going to be an entrepreneur and a superhero and do a side hustle. But the ones that do, you know, it's worth looking at and it's worth looking at developing them differently than the other team members in your business who are more functional, who are more corporate, who are more whatever. And so as an entrepreneur, there's a lot of lessons there. And 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 things that you can do better. So I mean, the ultimate goal and the dream, if you want to really simplify it, if you're like, oh my God, how do I take everyone's dreams? It just seems so overwhelming. It's this simple. Every person deserves financial independence, meaning a life free of debt. And every person deserves the freedom to choose the legacy that they want for their family. And I'm not talking about only financially. Financially is a minor part of it. What I'm really talking about is the core values, whether religious, whether personal, whether whatever, the foundation of a family or and core values of a human that are instilled in that family that can easily be passed on from generation to generation where, where there's uncomfort and hardship, but not so much that it's at the sake of the growth of the family. So what do you want? You want to give them financial independence and you want to give them um, the freedom to build their legacies. It's, and that's their dreams because everything that they dream of is within that, whether it's cars, whether it's houses, whether it's getting their kids to college, whether it's whatever, it's all in that sphere. And whether they choose to do it wisely or not wisely, that doesn't matter you're doing the right thing by giving them the opportunity, right? So that's where it is. And um, if you're really going to give them an opportunity, you should train them in leadership and skills along the way. 36 years before I figured that one out fully. Believed in training, believed in webinars, believed in process training, process, 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 train process all the time. Still food service partners were still... Like even in our new facility in Georgia, we're on phone calls all day talking about processes in the place. But we didn't train and talk about the soft side of things enough. The, the goals, the dreams, the visions, the core values, what made us actually have a culture as a business. We didn't do it. And it's no one's fault. We were a small business and we were growing and, and growing through process growth. But, you know, invest all the way around. It is important to soft skills. So. Thank you, Elena. That was a good question. Awesome. I really appreciate that. And I think that this episode will be really meaningful for any young entrepreneur. So make sure that you forward this to your friends or share it to your social pages. And we would really love and appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. 